Hello dear participants today i will discuss an integrated topic on activated charcoal now this uh, topic would be relevant to a number of competencies in different subjects for example in pharmacology uh, in forensic medicine in community medicine in internal medicine and in pediatrics in all these subjects there is one or two related competencies where part of the uh, part of the the competency will be covered as universal antidote or antidote therefore i thought it pertinent to prepare a small presentation on activated charcoal which the students and learners across all phases will benefit now let us begin now in case of poisoning one of the major step is gastrointestinal decontamination it is should be considered as an essential early step and uh, this uh, decontamination includes removal of the poison by any means for example if there is skin exposure then patients should be removed away skin should be washed and then next step would be removal of the unabsorbed uh, poison from the stomach that can be done either by induced emesis or by the use of some local uh, agent such as activated charcoal which will adsorb the unabsorbed poison now today i'll discuss the role of activated charcoal i will tell what the charcoal is what is activated charcoal and what modifications are available to be used now charcoal is prepared by controlled incomplete combustion of organic material such as peat coal wood coconut shell or petroleum now activation that is activated charcoal involves heating of charcoal at a high temperature in a stream of steam carbon dioxide and oxygen in the presence of activating agent the activating agents are phosphoric acid zinc chloride some use both other agents are potassium hydroxide and potassium carbonate the process of activation creates a highly developed internal pore structure in the charcoal and thereby it increases the surface area from 2 to 4 meter square per gram of unactivated to an area in excess of 1500 meter square per gram in the activated charcoal the medicinal activated charcoal should have at least a surface area of 900 meter square per gram or more and this is a pharmacopeia standard now the effect of activated charcoal depends on the time of administration it has been studied and found that charcoal decreases the absorption of ingestants toxins by an average of 73% when given within 5 minutes of the ingestion of the toxin it only adsorbs 51% when given at 30 minutes and only 36% when given at 60 minutes or later therefore it should always be given administered 1 to 2 hours of the exposure that is very important to consider now the usual dose is the simple way to remember is 1 g per kg but a range could be 0.5 g to 2 g per kg and uh, an average amount is 60 to 100 grams orally or via nasogastric tube it is usually mixed in aqueous slurry now children require much lesser doses for children up to age of 13 years 25 to 50 gram or smaller doses based on the body weight are used how does activated charcoal act the charcoal is negatively charged so attracts the positively charged chemicals and mostly toxins and just like a sponge it adsorbs not absorbs but adsorbs toxins into its fine porous structure
the toxin should be in the dissolved form in the liquid form and it should be in direct contact with the charcoal so that adsorption occurs quickly the lipid soluble drugs with larger volume of distribution are easily adsorbed and therefore many a drugs during poisoning charcoal is usable elimination of toxin can be enhanced by simultaneous catharsis along with use of activated charcoal and we should know that activated charcoal is inert and is not absorbed systematically usually it is dispensed in various doses forms powder tablet capsule or a suspension with the different strengths now activated charcoal is most effective if given in a ratio of at least 10 to 1 by weight that means 10 times the toxin weight if it is given in that dose it will be the most effective but usual dose calculation is 1 gram per kg if it cannot be given as a single dose because it is bulky then it may be administered in divided doses every 2 to 4 hours entire dose should be given in first 24 hours along with bowel irrigation so that adequate response is achieved large number of drugs tox as toxins in high doses cause the poisoning and they they all can be adsorbed by the use of activated charcoal some of the drugs are paracetamol tricyclic antidepressants theophylline phenytoin paraquat organophosphates chloroquine virapamil beta blockers these drugs if taken in excessive doses charcoal adsorption can be utilized now for paracetamol intoxication the usual way is correct that is one should be given activated charcoal should be given 1 to 2 hours but it can very well be given within 4 hours of the ingestion now there are certain drugs and chemicals which do not bind adsorb with the activated charcoal for example iron lithium potassium they don't bind therefore no adsorption occurs and the binding is poor for alcohols it is very poor for cyanides apart from alcohols and cyanides corrosive highly polar compounds for example acids and alkalis hydrocarbons and metals they are not well adsorbed by the charcoal therefore charcoal will not be of use in fact in acid and alkali poisoning charcoal should not be used at all now what is the method of use is there are two ways charcoal is given either orally or through nasogastric tube in semi conscious or unconscious patient now minimum of 0.25 parts of water should be there for each part of the active charcoal to make a thick slurry and it can be shaken well before use and it should hold be drank that is important the remaining portion can also be diluted with additional water and drank if patient is conscious but one should not mix the activated charcoal with chocolate syrup ice cream or sherbet when it is given by nasogastric route large bowl uh, nasogastric tube should be used for adults and children and usual for children is 10 to 14 gauge nasogastric tube through which it is given now there another modification of activated charcoal which is to be given as a single dose is multi dose activated charcoal now here multi dose activated charcoal means giving more than two doses usually four to six doses or more here the purpose is to enhance not only adsorption but enhance elimination of the toxin and uh, this multi dose activated charcoal is most suitable again for drugs with prolonged half lives now what are the advantages advantages are the multi dose activated charcoal is useful even late of the poisoning when patient comes late and even when he has taken toxic doses of tablets active uh, active drug which is in the prolonged doses form that is sustained release preparations so this is one advantage second is the technique is simple safe and non invasive for drug detoxification and the third advantage is it avoids need for 
the complicated instrumentation and machines that is hemodialysis and hemo perfusion so multi dose activated charcoal is a advantage in using now use of multiple doses of the active charcoal may enhance removal of the absorbed drug this is important not only the drug in the stomach that is adsorption but multi doses of the activity charcoal would reduce the amount of drug in the body that is it enhances removal of the drug and increases clearance elimination of the drug by two processes one is called as it interrupts the enterogastric enteroenteric and enterohepatic cycling of the drug some drugs undergo for example hormones undergo enterohepatic cycling and they become this enterohepatic recycling becomes the reservoir of the drug and this reservoir is reduced when multiple doses are given because every time it adsorbs the drugs so that more comes from the systemic circulation into the uh, stomach by concentration gradient now second is it promotes gut dialysis that is charcoal creates a diffusion gradient across the gut mucosa that enhances movement of drug from the blood stream into the intestinal lumen where it is adsorbed by the charcoal so by these two mechanisms there is increased elimination of the drug and toxin from the body and there is enhanced removal of the toxin now the dose usual is 50 to 100 g is the first dose and thereafter more smaller doses are repeated 12.5 g per hour or 12.5 g every 2 to 4 hourly for many doses and this way there will be reduction in the toxicity of the drug by enhanced elimination enhanced gut elimination so this process is called as gut dialysis now what is the utility of multi multiple dose activated charcoal multiple dose activated charcoal has the highest utility in overdoses of a number of compounds namely carbamazepine dapsone phenobarbital quinine phenytoin paroxicum theophylline meprobimate digoxin and digitoxin and yellow oriander now these are the drugs where single dose have been used but multiple doses of the activated charcoal are more effective in removal and most of the them have very long half lives now what are the complications of use of activated charcoal and multi doses activated charcoal usually vomiting constipation can occur if the airway is not secured there will be pulmonary aspiration and that will cause the serious problem which may result in death also now nasogastric administration of charcoal increases the likelihood of vomiting with the risk of aspirational pneumonia and often the sweetening agent like sorbitol which also acts as a cathartic laxative is also combined with charcoal however sorbitol co administration which enhances palatability and catharsis may actually increase the risk of vomiting and thereby chances of aspirational pneumonia therefore at best uh, multiple doses should be given alone without sorbitol now in rare cases that will be intestinal obstruction because of the large inert substance in the lumen then there will all, may always be electrolyte disturbance due to cathartic use along with the uh, activity charcoal for gastrointestinal decontamination now contraindications to multi doses activated charcoal are unprotected airways obstructive gut lesions and paralytic ileus either due to drug or due to disease because of these reasons in these conditions activated charcoal or multi dose activated charcoal should not be given now as a corollary this is all about the use of activated charcoal and multi dose activated charcoal there was a time when universal antidote was used which contained powdered charcoal 
tannic acid and magnesium hydroxide charcoal had two parts other were one part each now this universal antidote was actually a standard of treatment in poisoning later on it was found that tannic acid component would reduce the adsorbive capacity of the charcoal so its use has declined and presently its use is replaced by activated charcoal per se now what are the other uses of activated charcoal apart from poisoning non medicinal uses are many i will not discuss in detail cosmetic in industry as a fuel particularly fuel in metallurgy activated charcoal is used for water filtration and sewage treatment plants but medicinal uses are it's used as tooth whitener and in number of skin preparations it is used as exfoliant face wash face peel soap that is charcoal soap is for the treatment of acne and allergic condition a rare condition is fish odor syndrome and that is because of a specific amino acid urea and therefore in this condition it can be used as deodorant it removes the bad odor fishy odor and this can be used in fact if you look at the charcoal along with uh, the deflatulent agents are commonly prescribed in the treatment of what is known as gas syndrome that is excessive gas formation flatulent dyspepsia in this condition uh, one uses charcoal activated charcoal along with dimethicone or simethicone which are deflatulent or antiflatulent agents and such preparations are large number available otc and also as the prescription drugs now charcoal is also useful as charcoal hemoperfusion column where activated charcoal cartridges are useful for the uh, removal of the drug in conditions where life is endangered for example severe carbamazepine phenytoin and chloral hydrate poisoning charcoal hemoperfusion has also been found to remove toxins in hepatic failure so in summary activated charcoal is prepared by controlled pyrolysis using activators such as zinc chloride single doses of activated charcoal adsorb the drug and toxins and thus prevent drug absorption multiple doses or multiple dose activated charcoal not only reduces drug absorption but also enhances systemic clearance of toxins there are other medicinal uses of activated charcoal which are based on its antiflatulent and exfoliant actions so i finish with the activated charcoal and one can go through the detailed practice guidelines available on the website thank you for joining my next presentation will be on the carbamate poisoning thank you good day